My name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is a screencast to help you understand the concept that there are two forces on each ion, a chemical force and an electrical force. This is part of a series of screencasts explaining the concept of the equilibrium potential in terms of the chemical and electrical forces on an individual ion. Part 1 provides a basic grounding by introducing the chemical and electrical forces and showing what voltage is. Part 2 shows an example in which the movement of a few ions across the membrane will result in a large change in the transmembrane voltage but effectively no change in the chemical gradients or forces. Part 3 shows how to add the chemical and electrical forces to make a net force and then shows how to answer an exam question about drawing those forces during the equilibrium potential of potassium. Part 4 applies all the previous concepts to the forces at rest and during the peak of the action potential for sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride, and it shows why the electrochemical or Nernst force on chloride can vary, and thus why chloride is a key regulator in cell physiology. In this installment, we consider two forces, chemical and electrical, and then ask, what is voltage? When considering ions in solution, there are two forces on each ion. The chemical force, which is also called the diffusional force, the chemical force is based upon the difference in concentration across the membrane. For example, if there is 10 times as much sodium outside than there is inside, the chemical force on sodium channels is 60 millivolts directed into the cell. As is traditional, in this screencast, a sodium ion in solution will be illustrated as the letters Na+, while a chloride ion will be abbreviated as Cl-. Next, we can consider the electrical force on ions. This is based on the transmembrane voltage, or the electric potential energy, which varies over time. What is voltage? Voltage is charge separation. They are effectively the same thing. In a solution of salt water, each sodium ion has a chloride ion next to it. The negative and positive charges cancel out, and thus there is no electric field. The voltage between any two points is, for all intents and purposes, zero. The voltage throughout the salt water solution remains at zero because any charge separation that happens in solution is immediately eliminated. If a single pair of a sodium and a chloride ion were separated, there would be an electric field. Nature abhors such charge separations. So, any charge separation in solution is immediately eliminated. The way that happens is that there is a resulting electric field. This newly created local electric field would immediately draw the ions together, which would lead to the disappearance of the electric field. So, the reason there is no electric field is that any electric field is immediately eliminated. However, Across a selective membrane, such as the plasma membrane, charge can separate. For example, when a sodium channel opens, it results in sodium ions crossing the membrane, which can create an electric field. But chloride cannot penetrate the membrane. Now there is an electric field across the membrane, because there is a positive charge that is not accompanied by a negative charge right next to it. How did this happen? In this example, only one sodium ion moved, and this movement of only one sodium ion did not change the sodium concentration on either side of the membrane. Yet, voltage inside the membrane is now positive. This is a rule of thumb. It takes the movement of only a small number of ions across the membrane to change the voltage, but to change the concentration gradient, it would require the movement of huge numbers of ions. What is voltage? Voltage is the difference in potential energy between two points in an electric field. This is also called the electric potential, or driving force on charged particles, such as ions, that impels them to move. If you imagine a rapids on a river, voltage is the height and steepness of the waterfall. Current is the total water that is flowing per second past a given point, and resistance is how wide the waterfall is or how rocky it is. Wider waterfalls have less resistance, which leads to more fluid flow. 
A tall waterfall that is very thin, that is, it has high resistance, will not allow much water to flow. In the case of both a waterfall and an electrical resistor, resistance depends upon barriers, length, and thinness. Now let's consider the electrical force across the membrane. Vm is an abbreviation we use for the instantaneous membrane potential. V stands for voltage, M stands for membrane. During the action potential, Vm changes. The resting membrane potential is the set point voltage the membrane will tend toward when at rest. The resting membrane potential is abbreviated RMP, or V-rest. When the cell is at rest, Vm, the membrane potential, equals the resting membrane potential. Compared to Vm, the instantaneous membrane potential, the resting membrane potential is a set point. It does not change. Vm is based on the imbalance between positive and negative charges across the membrane. Vm, because it is related to the electric field, is the same for all ions. By contrast, the chemical, or diffusional force, on potassium ions is effectively independent of the chemical force on sodium ions. During the action potential, Vm changes, but the chemical forces on each ion do not change. Only a tiny number of ions need to move across the membrane to create an electric field. This is the key to understanding the ion movements during an action potential. During an action potential, Vm will change dramatically, yet the concentration gradients of the ions across the cell membrane will remain virtually unchanged.